What is up guys, it is Barry Michael Doyle here and welcome to the fourth part of this React Native Redux tutorial where I'm showing you how to build this Kappa Keys application I built from scratch to finish. In this video we are going to tackle React Navigation which is a node module for React which allows us to work with different screens. Now fair enough, in this application we only use one screen but I thought I'd introduce this to you so that in case you want to make further screens later on we have a good boilerplate going for our code base here. Now, the main thing that's going to be implemented in this React Navigation main screen is the header over here. This, All of this forms part of the Stack Navigator in React Navigation's module. Anyway, let's hop into some code. Right, so here we are in our app.js file in Visual Studio Code. And before I continue, I want to send out my sincerest apologies to having such tiny text. I've made it much bigger this time, so I hope that is awesome for you guys. Anyway, what I want to start off by doing is cleaning up some things here. Now, firstly, we're not going to be using the styles here or anything inside the store at all. So we can get rid of all of that. We can even get rid of this stuff. But what we are going to be using is a stack navigator from the React Navigation module. So the first thing I want to do is implement that. Ignore my previous code there. We want to say npm install and make sure you're in your directory where your product is where your project is formed. Uh, we want to say npm install uh, React Navigation. And I forgot the dash dash save, so make sure you do that as well. And what's going to happen here is it will install our React Navigation stuff there. But what I want to go on to do is import Stack Navigator from that so long. So we're going to have the Stack Navigator uh, from React Navigation. And that, oops, I spelled stuff wrong there. That should work once we have this package finished downloading and installing. Now how we're going to implement this is we're going to straight up just put in a main navigator component. And I'm not going to make this anywhere else except right up here. We're going to make this component in the code. So this main navigator is going to be made up of a stack navigator, which is what we have imported up here. And the stack navigator takes a few things. In this case, we're going to have our main screen. So we're going to have a root called main. And that is going to have a screen, which is going to be our main screen. Which, if you remember, we have created something under our screens over here called main screen. So don't stress, we'll fill that up later. For now, we have this all set up. So this is kind of perfect. The last thing we need to do is import main screen from screens. So we say dot slash screens to get to our screens folder and then main screen to get our main screen component. Perfect. Now, obviously this still isn't working because we haven't set up, what haven't we done actually? Oh, that's another thing I want to get rid of this react dot component. I do not like that. So I am going to get components straight from the react module. There we go. That's all perfect. Now things are still freaking out simply because we are still downloading our react navigation module and installing it. So don't stress, we'll worry about that later when it's done. Next thing I want to do is head into our main screen, which is over here. And we're going to put quite a ton of stuff in here, but let's start off with the usual. We're going to make a React component and this is going to be, this component is going to have lifecycle methods and stuff. So we're going to need to import components as well from React. And to start off, I just want to start off by making the actual class main screen. We'll worry about putting everything else into here later because this is going to contain quite a few things. So what does our component usually have? We want to export default main screen. That's just our, our classic boilerplate for everything. The next thing we want to do is consider adding our usual render method in here. So we can stick in render. And for now, I just want to render a view that goes across the whole screen and has that normal background color that I really like. So that would mean we add a view, we add the style flex one and background color. I like to make the background color triple D because that gives us just a nice light gray that's not the white in your face thing that blinds you when you're looking at it at night. 
So that's really cool. Anyway, this is going to contain a bunch of things that we're not going to implement just yet. We're going to have the, if you think about it, we're going to have the chords modal. I like to put the modals at the top of the screen just so we know that they're there. But I'm just commenting these in. So if you know from my previous videos, this means that you're commenting in JSX. This is supposed to be extends. I'm sorry for the bad typing. Another thing we're going to add in is the... Well, it's basically just all the other content. So I'm just going to call it content for now. Because I don't want to waste too much time showing us what's going on here. And then there'll be other stuff like the banner ad. Well, you kind of get the point. I'm just going to leave space for that. So for now, I want to make sure that I am going to use the navigation options. So in order to do that, we need to add another function here to our main screen component, which is going to be static navigation options. So this is just a usual thing that you would implement if you were going to have a, if you're using React Navigation. So this is a component that's used in React Navigation. We see that here in our app file. I'm going to save this along. It seems like our code is up. Oh, I've got to run this as an administrator. Guys, remember, always run this as an administrator. So I will be right back. Right, so here I am as an administrator. I'm going to run npm install dash dash save and then react navigation. If I can spell navigation correctly. There we go. So that should do its thing. Now, remember, we've got this main screen over here, which is being used by the stack navigator. So because this is used inside the stack navigator, we can implement these extra little features called navigation options. Make sure this is spelled correctly because that's quite important. And the next thing we want to do is set a whole bunch of stuff in here. So we're going to return a bunch of different fields. Uh, the first thing I want to return is title. And I'm going to set this title to capo keys. That's pretty straightforward because I want to name my app that. Uh, if you remember from our example, here's our running example. We're, we've called this capo keys. And it's also going to have this image up here, but I will worry about that later because this video is turning out to be pretty long. It's quite a bit to explain. So what I want to do is also add something called the header style. So the header style is going to consist of an object which takes the height and this height is going to take it's going to look at things and it's going to say okay if the platform operating system is android then i want to say it is 54 plus with with android you have to worry about a status bar height so i'm going to make a constant called status bar height and I will refer back to that in a second. Currently, that doesn't exist, but I will create it just now. Otherwise, if it's iOS, then we just want it to be 54 high. And that's all cool. We will worry about how this platform OS thing works and everything later. And the other thing I want to set is the background color. And I want to set this background color to hash 2196F3. And that gives you the nice blue color that I was looking for. Now, before I go on, let me also mention that I need to look at the title style. So the title style, we have a property here called header title style. And this needs to have a margin top, otherwise it's not gonna look very nicely aligned. This is also platform specific. So we have platform.os equal equals Android. So if it's Android, we want it also to have that margin of a status bar height. And this is why I make it a constant because we're gonna reuse the status bar height. And if it's IS, we don't have to worry about it. So we just say zero. Another thing is we want the text to be white. So we just say color white, if I can spell white. There we go. And now what we'd also, if we were gonna worry about the image, we're going to say header left, and in here, we will return what we want to have in the left, which would be the image. But we're not going to stress about that right now. So for now, I'm actually just going to make this header left an empty view. There we go. No problem there. Now I'm using a view, which means I need to import view. So I'm going to import view from React Native. 
Another thing is this platform property here, this actually also comes from React Native. So that's built into React Native. So that basically lets you check if this is platform OS, well, it lets you check the platform operating system. So we can say stuff like if it is Android, then do this. If it's iOS, do something else. Here we're saying if it's Android, give it 54 plus status bar height, otherwise give it 54 height. And again, we say down here, platform.os, if it is Android, we say status bar height, otherwise, in the otherwise case, it would be iOS, we would make this height, this margin top zero. That's just to align our title properly on different devices. Now, theoretically, this is supposed to work. I haven't actually tested it on iPhone, but I know this is an issue on Android, and I think it's only on Android. So that's why I've set this whole platform OS Android system up. Now, another thing we need to do is we have to import, we have to get the status bar height. So I've implemented this whole status bar height thing. And the way that is implemented is I need to make another folder on the side here, which I haven't actually made yet. And I'm going to call this constants. I don't want it to be in screen, so I'll move it out now. But we make this folder constants. So let me just move it out. I need to move all the way down here. Stick it down there. So where's our constants? There it is. And uh, we want to add a file in here called index.js. So before I make anything there, I want to say that I'm going to import the status bar height, which is something I still need to work out from dot slash, well, from the folder outside called constants. And because we're going to use an index file in constants, which is over here, we don't have to stress about saying slash index because it will just take the index file. And in this index file, we're going to get a few things. What I want to get specifically is constants straight from Expo. So I'm going to get, we're going to reuse this file for a whole bunch of other stuff. So bear in mind that don't stress the reason I'm making this constants files, because we're not only going to use it for status bar height, we're going to have status, we're going to have constants all over the place. So I want to stick them all into one folder. So our code is organized. So we're going to import constants from Expo. And this is something nice that's built into Expo. And what I basically want to do is export const status bar height, which is what we are making now. And that's going to be constants.status bar height. Now, fair enough, I could get all of this stuff from, I could just straight up import expo into main screen and all that stuff. But the thing is, we're going to be using constants a whole bunch of times. So I thought, you know what, let's just keep all our constants together in one file, because later on, you'll understand that this is going to be great for organizing our code. So now we can head back to our main screen. And everything is working fine, except for this class, let me figure out what's wrong here. Okay, I figured out the problem. The problem is that we have not put a return statement inside our render function, which is obviously a big no, no. So we need to put this return statement in here. And that way, everything should be back to normal and working fine. Let me get rid of that extra spacing there. And there we go, we have our main screen. Now what we expect our main screen to do is to provide a, a whole header. And the title of the header is going to be Kappa keys. And the header style is going to be the height. Well, it's going to have a height of 54 plus a status bar height, which is like probably another 20 or so. And also it'll have this nice little blue background color. And then the title style as well, it's going to have a margin from the top of either the status bar height or zero, depending on what the platform operating system is. And the color is going to be white. Then we're also going to have a header left icon, which is just going to be an empty view for now. So maybe I should put something in there and just say view and like I for icon and then close view. Got to remove this though. And that way we just say that that's where the icon is going to go. So I for icon, bear that in mind when we test our application. So if we look back at our app JS, we have this main navigator, which has the main screen and that's the default screen as well. If you wanted to add other screens, you'd add them on by saying like, I don't know, the about screen. And then you'll say screen And then you'll put in like the about screen in there, but we're not going to do any of that at all in this tutorial. Uh, we might later, maybe I'll decide to do it later just to show you how it works. Anyway, what it does is it has this main screen and it links it to the component that we have built over here. And remember this all lies inside the provider, which is means we still maintain that global 
application state, which is epic. It's great for what we needed to do. Now let's go check out our application in Expo. So here we are in Expo, and I just want to mention that our React navigation component has successfully been installed. And another thing I want to mention is that you need to make sure that you restart your application first. So I'm currently doing that now because every time you add a node module to your application, this needs to rebundle. So be sure to restart your project before trying to test it after adding new modules. Anyway, I'll catch you when this is done. I just wanted to mention something while I was loading my application, is this over here represents our loading icon. And in the next video, we're going to implement that icon in our header, which currently, remember we're expecting I, and my phone is just closed. So my phone's back on. We have this loading icon here, which is, I want to change this to our Capo Keys logo, because that would be really nice to brand it that way. Because this does happen when our app starts up as well, when you've deployed it and everything, we have this little loading icon. It obviously doesn't take as long because the package is already bundled and everything. Currently we can see there it's 67%, very hard to see actually, so my bad if you can't see it properly. What we want to do is, well, what we're going to expect when this is done is we're going to have our header here and there's going to be no content. The screen will just be less white. It should be a grayer. And we'll have that blue header with the title capo keys in white. And then we'll have a little eye symbol as well, just to represent where we're going to put the icon. In our next video, we will be showing you how to get this little application icon loading screen to change to your capo keys one as well as setting it up here so we can have it all sorted. And again, I'll provide the image for you. Just note that if you do want to make your own application deploy and stuff, change the image, don't steal my brand. Uh, but you're welcome to change this application, make it better, make tons of money off it. Uh, I don't mind, just, I don't know, give me some credit or something. Give a shout out to me. Uh, I will come back to you when this is done. Okay, and it says it is 100%, so it should be done any second now. But guys, I want to take this moment to say, if you are enjoying this series, please let a, leave a comment below. Actually, you know what? I challenge you. Leave a comment below that says, I made it to the end of the video because we're basically almost at the end of the video. So I would much appreciate that comment and make sure that you subscribe. Hit this button down here and like the video as well, just underneath this button down here. And that would be really much appreciated. Also share this with your friends and I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. But hang on, I need to show you actually the end result. And there we have it. Our program does not work because I forgot to wrap this raw text I into a text component. So let's head over to the code quickly because I wasn't actually planning to do this. I need to put this into a text component. And I also need to import the text component from React Native. So make sure you go up here and you go to text because you can't just throw in a random I in the middle of a view. So let's head back to Expo and here's our application rebuilding and rerunning. And here we have it. We have our Kappa Keys application. Now I didn't really style it. So that, uh, that little black mark over there, I don't know if you can see it up there is representing the eye because I didn't set any styles to it and say where it was supposed to go and stuff. But we have our header, which is here Kappa Keys and it's nicely spaced between the top and the bottom. Even nicer, our, our top bar here is you know, it matches the color. It's just like a gray transparent, well, it's a black transparent kind of bar, which is really great. I mean, I can move it down and stuff, which is awesome. And what else did I want to say? Actually, that is it. So guys, as usual, if you like the video, please leave a like and be sure to subscribe.